Hey, welcome everybody. The uh, first <coughs> tutorial of the Illustrator portion of your drawing class is going to uh, introduce you to drawing simple shapes. Um, this is a tutorial that you'll find on adobe.com, the website, but I will demonstrate the first couple of tutorials that I have you work through just to make sure that you understand where the tools are and how to access them when you need them. So, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a new document in Illustrator. I've activated Illustrator CC and I'm going to go to File and New, Command N if you're using Quick Keys, which is always a good thing. And we're going to set this up as a print uh, document and it's going to be an 8.5 by 11. Orientation is going to be um, not landscape but um, portrait. And so I'm going to click on this and you're going to see those are all the choices that need to be made. I can change the title to Tutorial 1, Basic Shapes. Orientation again is Portrait and with this 8.5 by 11. Um, and the bleed, which is, this is the um, overlap from 8.5 by 11. It, oh, the um, border is going to overlap it by um, one point. 0.125 inches on all four sides. That's because we're making it a print document and in order to ensure that everything gets printed that needs to be printed, you create a bleed. That's what this is and I'll show you when we actually come up with the document itself. CMYK color, that stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black and that is the print or the color mode for print settings. So we're going to go create and you'll see that even though I have everything kind of jumbled up here because I'm always a great one for messing up my desktop whether it's um, computer desktop or otherwise oh my gosh give me a break we're not going to do that um, we are going to go up here to essentials and I'm going to reset I hope I'm going to reset the essentials works workplace and that typically will put everything away so we can see a little bit more of what's going on in the actual um, in the actual document. This white area is the printable area. Uh, you'll see just a little black border around it. That indicates the measurements that we set it up at 8.5 by 11. And if you do want to check that you can go up to view and you can ask that the rulers be shown and you'll see that um, the end of the document ends at eight and a half, eight and a half, and then for the width and then for the length, it's at eleven and a half. Now, this little red line that extends beyond the document, that is the um, bleed line. And again, remember I said that the bleed line, um, if we were importing color right to the very or uh, creating color right to the very edge of the border of the document we would extend it beyond to this red line so that when the printer or the bindery person went in to trim it uh, we wouldn't get unsightly white edges but we'd actually get the color or the picture or whatever that we wanted right to the edge so we've got the document set up and I've set it up again in an essentials workspace um, there's a number of different workspaces that are identified here this just simply brings up the tools that you're going to typically use for the kind of job that we're going to be doing if we were doing something using type only we would bring up the typography website or if we were working for the, or the typography um, workspace. If we were working for the web, again, uh, that would bring up the tools, essentials, the tools that are essential for working with a web um, layout. But essentials is kind of a basic and we're just going to stick with that. All right, this is the toolbox. You'll find these are the panels that we will use um, and you'll become more familiar with them as we get along in the class. And then here are the menu um, the menu items up here under file edit just like any other software um, you have a drop down menu that gives you other options all right so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, go to number two which is to draw simple shapes we're going to add rectangles and we're going to start by drawing the larger structures then fill in smaller details first we're going to draw a rectangular base to help us align the rest of the artwork so we're going to type M 
And notice in the toolbox what happens when I type M. That brings us right to the rectangular tool. This little arrow in the lower right hand side indicates that if you click on that, there's going to be other tools available to us, but we're going to use the rectangular tool. And we're going to drag a corner widget to scale it. To reposition the rectangle, we're going to hover over the center point widget and then click to drag to a different location. So we're going to just click and drag a long, skinny triangle, or rectangle. And you can drag one of these corner, um, one of these corner squares to enlarge it. I'm going to put you on hold here for a minute. Sounds like my dog is having um, issues out here. I'll be right back. Get used to this because this is the rest of the semester is going to be, unfortunately, interrupted by my three dogs that require some attention when they think I'm doing something they don't want me to do. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and as I was explaining, um, we can drag these corner widgets to resize it, make it shorter, make it longer. We can uh, choose this one to make it um, thinner or thicker. And then to reposition the rectangle, we can hover over the center point that turns it into an arrow, and if we click and drag, we can move it to a separate location or a different location. Now you're going to want to draw more rectangles of different sizes representing walls using the magenta guides to help you align them to each of the uh, rectangular base. All right, so we're going to reposition this back down here. And then we're going to draw a few more rectangles. Now I didn't get that as close to the um, initial rectangle, or it looks like a square actually, that I wanted. And so I can do it, move it one of two ways. Remember I can hover over this center point and click and drag, or because it's still selected, and you note that it's selected by the blue um, rather than the black line, I can just use my arrow, and I've got my, my moving um, distance set very slightly, but I can move it then to get it right to the point where I want it to be. You see that little magenta line that comes up that helps us align it. <clears throat> and then we can zoom in to add smaller rectangles for the doors and windows and panes. Um, and to zoom in, we can press, um, if you're on a Mac, it would be a command. If you're on a PC, it would be control. And then the plus key, and you can zoom in by, again, command or control plus or out by command. <laughs> if, you, if you can hear that slurping in the background, that's my dog. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then to zoom out, again, command or control and the minus. N plus out minus. All right, so to draw a square shape, we're going to watch for the diagonal magenta guide as you dra drag, which indicates a perfect square, or press shift while dragging. All right, now, now we are going to create this uh, small door and window. So I'm going to click over here and drag what would appear to be a door. And then for the window, I'm going to click and drag and see that um, little diagonal um, magenta line, that indicates that it's a perfect square. Now if you want to ensure that it's a perfect square um, without looking for that line, just hold down your shift and that it's going to constrain that shape that typically comes out to a rectangle to a perfect square. All right, and again, if we want to move it, we can hover and then click and drag, or we can type V, like Victor, then our rectangle tool becomes a selection tool, and we can click and drag it to another location. Keep it in the same position. 
And I'm going to do a command, and for you if you're on a PC control, command plus to um, zoom in on this just a little bit more. I'm going to draw a couple of more of these shapes for you and then I am going to have you complete um, using the circles, um, complete the um, exercise which is I don't know about five or six more steps but first we're going to <clears throat> go back up here and we are going to draw a couple of more rectangles. No, where were we here? Up here further. A couple more um, squares and so I'm going to hold down my shift Click and oh, I have to get the rectangle first um, tool first, which is M, and then I'm going to drag and click and drag a couple of small windows here to make it mirror the um, to the extent that I can the illustration in the tutorial. Now it's still not exactly <clears throat> centered, so I am going to click and drag that a little bit to be aligned. Uh oh, dreaded circle. What do we do here? Click and drag this to align it a little bit more. All right, and then we're going to make one more small door over here, it looks like. And there you go. Now we're going to add the round porthole windows and so we're going to click and hold the rectangle tool. Remember up here I said if there's a little arrow on the lower right hand side that indicates there's other tools behind it. So we're going to click and drag or click and hold and um, navigate down to the ellipse tool. Oh my gosh. I'll be right back. Can you hear that dog? They they must think we have visitors or something. Just a moment, please. Okay, again, I apologize for that. Now I'm back. And now we're going to add circles. So we've got the ellipse tool. And we are going to um, and drag this until we see the exact circle indicator, uh, which are the magenta lines in the center showing that it's an exact circle or Hold down the shift, and there you go. Then we're going to use the center point widget to reposition the circle and resize it with the corner widget. So we're going to click, we're going to hover until we get the um, little move tool. We're going to click and drag that to move it. And then we are again going to resize it with the little corner widgets. I'm going to hold down my shift key so that it will make, I'm sure that it will continue to be a perfect circle as I resize it. All right. Now we're going to draw roofs um, in step number four and we're going to click and hold the ellipse tool and select the polygon tool. So if you click and hold on the ellipse tool, we're going to go down to the polygon tool and click. And then we're going to click anywhere on the artboard, anywhere, just click once. And what will happen is a dialog box will appear that allows us to choose the radius and the sides. We're going to enter three sides, so you can either down arrow or type in three, and then we're going to click OK. We're not going to mess with the radius, we're just going to leave it as is, and then we'll reposition it when we get it to, the, um, to be the triangle. Now we're going to use this center widget to reposition it. Let's see. It looks like that almost fits that one. I'm going to resize it. And there we go. Now we're going to do that again. 
and then we're going to reposition it. Resize it. And then if we want, we can make it, whoop, yeah, we can make that a little bit taller and skinnier. And then um, you can continue doing that with your roofs. I'm going to stop after those two, but you'll want to place roofs on the rest of your, your remaining buildings. Now we're going to use lines to add details to the window. So with the line segment tool and the line segment tool is, I don't know if it shows you up here. Oh, here it is. Here is the line segment tool. You're going to click That's not what I want to do. So, not sure where this line segment tool is. I'll be right back so you don't have to. I believe this is it right here, but I'm not sure how to make it a rounded, um, rounded top line. So I'll be back in just a moment while I mess with it so you don't have to use your time with my experiment. I'll be right back. All right. Um, I'd skipped a, a portion here, which was the reason why I wasn't able to figure out what we we're doing with the rounded um, point. Um, if you look back, and this is under um, step four, adding the triangles, it says with the direct selection tool, click once on the topmost corner of a triangle to select just that point. Well, you'll go up here, and this is the selection tool, and you'll see that this, if you hover over this um, arrow, this is the direct selection tool, or A. Now you'll also be able to click and hold and get the group selection tool with this, but what we want is the direct selection tool, and we want to click once on the topmost corner of a triangle. So let's click on this one, and you'll see this is the anchor point, and now I've selected just that point, and you can see now that I have that little circle here. Um, we're going to press shift as we drag down to, or drag freely to, and watch for the magenta vertical guide to help you keep the point aligned to the center. So we're going to click and drag. All right, now just in case I did that too quickly for you, the first thing that I tried was just to drag this anchor point down. Remember, I have the direct selection tool. I clicked on this one anchor point and drug down, and it did not give me the rounded corner that I wanted. So I'm going to back up, and you'll see this little circle. This is where you have to click to drag to get the rounded tip to your roof. Now you hold down your Shift key if you want to maintain that at... Um, point aligned to the center. And there you go. All right, now the line segment tools, uh, we're going to, this is number five, you're going to use lines to add details to the window. So if you go down here to your, to, over here to your toolbox, and I had used my arc tool to try and get that rounded corner when I was um, on hold there for a moment, uh, I'm going to click and hold on just down until I can find the line segment tool and we are going to draw a line segment from the top of this window to the bottom. You can hold down shift if you want to keep it exactly straight and that creates a division or a window pane. Now the fun part and um, I'm going to do that real quickly on a couple of these. You can do one or all.
Now the one thing that I'm, before we get into color, I want you to pay attention to. Somewhere along this process, I've changed my line weight inadvertently. I don't know if it was um, a pre-selection that I had done in a previous illustration, but if I click on these small rectangles here, the actual walls, you'll see that my stroke is 1.413. If you click on this rounded roof, my stroke goes up to a weight of 4.024. I want them all to be equally um, equally sized. So I'm going to do a Command or Control A. If yours are the same and you're on a PC, do Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac. And that's going to select everything, all of the lines. I'm going to go up here and change the stroke weight to one point. Let's click off and see. Now I like that better. All right. So again, all I did was do a Command or Control A, like Apple. Then I went up to uh, make my stroke, which is what these are called, the stroke weight of these lines, rectangles. I changed them all to be consistent one point. All right. Now to add color, we're going to type V to access the selection tool. And then we're going to click on the long rectangular base. And then in the control panel, we're going to click the fill color swatch. It's right up here. And that's going to choose a that's going to allow us to choose a, a color. I'm going to make my base in dark blue or purple. And then you are going to um, again, we've still got that selected and we're going to select none to remove the shapes outline stroke. So if you go over here, this is the outline stroke to this particular shape. We're going to click over here and we're going to say I don't want any, none. So it's filled with this purple color and it's got no stroke on it at all. And then we're going to repeat that to color all of the walls and roofs. Now I am going to let you um, uh, you finished up this tutorial on your own, adding color on your own. So you're going to go through and complete step number six. And then you're going to go to step number seven. And um, as far as step number eight, preparing for the output, simply select, um, save and select. And I'm going to have you upload it. And I'll give you an upload um, tab on Blackboard um, during the first week of our um, computer illustration or computer drawing. And that will be, I think, March 9th or 7th. So, All right. I will see you then. And I will continue to add a couple of little tutorials up until that time so you can get used to um, having a lot of fun drawing in Illustrator. It's been great working with you. Look forward to talking with you in the near future.